Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I'm out here fishing riprap. Why would you think I want to fish a bunch of rocks? Well, let me tell you what, rocks, riprap, can be productive year round. It's a simple fact, it, the rocks, algae collects on the rocks and organic material will fall down in between the cracks and crevices of the rocks. This in turn attracts crawdads, insects, bait fish. It's a buffet for the bass. And it'll happen year round, even in the winter time, you get a few warm sunny days, it'll warm up these rocks, and that'll get the whole ecosystem going, even if the water temp's in the 40s. Okay, so riprap, if you have it in your lake, you gotta fish it. And as a matter of fact, you can find them anywhere. You can find them in, in dams like this, or you can find them along roadbeds, you can find them, homeowners will use riprap to prevent erosion of their, of their property. Even marinas and other areas, you'll find riprap pretty much everywhere. So if you find them, stop and fish them, definitely. The different ways to fish them, I wanna get into that. I'm gonna talk about how to fish them effectively and how to find the hot spots within riprap. Before I put my boat <laughs> into the riprap, a little bit of waves here coming in. First of all, how we're gonna fish it. The most effective way, the most common way to fish riprap is with crankbaits, deep diving crankbaits. What you want is the, rip, is, the, is the crankbait to bounce off that riprap. You want it to hit it and ricochet off of it. What happens is that when that crankbait hits it, it stops momentarily and then fires off in an odd direction before it slows down back to its normal speed. That odd behavior, that erratic behavior, that's often what triggers a bite. See, bass, they're pre-programmed by nature to attack injured and disoriented bait fish. And that's exactly what it mimics when you're bouncing it off the rocks. That's the primary way of fishing riprap. There's a couple other baits that work really well though. Spinner baits, for example. Love fishing spinner baits on riprap. And, and here's the thing. See, I'm, like I said, I'm standing 12 feet of water. Sure, throw a spinner bait in 12 foot of water, that works fine, but don't be swayed by that. Look at this. If you can see, this riprap here has got sort of, sort of a gradual slope to it. Makes total sense if I'm standing 12 feet of water to fish a spinner bait. But don't be swayed by that. A lot of riprap that I fish also is just straight up and down, almost straight up and down. I'll be standing this far away from the shoreline, but I'll be standing, say, in 20, 30 feet of water. Spinnerbaits still work really well for that situation. Here's why. First of all, I throw the spinnerbait right up near the rocks, as close as I can. I want to throw a short underhand cast, nice soft presentation. The reason being is bass, so they're ambush. They like to ambush bait fish, and if you can get bait fish near the surface of the water, then they can't escape. So that's a place where the bass will only want to go. Well, if the water, where the water meets the shoreline, now you've got the surface and a physical barrier. Now the bait fish are trapped. So even if I'm standing in 20, 30 feet of water, if I can get that spinnerbait right up to that intersection, oftentimes the bass are there. They're in six, eight feet of water, six, eight inches of water, excuse me. I'll cast up there and I'll get whacked within two to three turns of the handle, even though I'm standing in deep water. So don't be afraid to throw spinnerbaits, but you gotta get them right up near the rocks. Don't throw overhand cast, because if you hit the rocks, you can be able to bust up your spinnerbait. Nice, soft, underhand cast. That's the presentation you want. Now, line, let's talk about line for a second. I like to use cigar tatsu fluorocarbon line for those type of baits because it's abrasion resistant. You're, this, this bait, the, the line's gonna be draped over the rocks, it's gonna get nicked and frayed, but with fluorocarbon, it's much more apt to withstand all that abuse. Even in, you know, monofilament, copolymer does, doesn't stand up as well. Braid, on the other hand, it sounds like a great choice. I wouldn't use it. Braid is, it's funny, it's really strong when you're using, you know, throwing it in vegetation, throwing it around woods and pilings, that sort of thing, but riprap, is braid's kryptonite. Braid tends to get tore up and shredded by the, by the riprap. So it's not a good choice to use. That's why I'm using fluorocarbon. It's strong, sensitive, it's gonna hand up, handle the, uh, the abuse. Other baits that are really good to use on, on riprap, top water. Definitely you wanna throw top water, especially in the warmer months, in the low light conditions. Buzz baits, poppers, uh, you know, anything like that. Those are the baits you want to be throwing. That can be a heck of a lot of fun. You can have a heyday catching fish off top water during those times of the year. Now let's talk a little bit about baits that fall. We've talked about the horizontal baits. They work really well. The vertical baits, that's a little bit different. Sometimes the bass, they don't want those horizontal baits, but to fish vertical takes a little bit more patience and work in riprap. The easiest one to throw is like a Senko type bait or a, or a Savage Gear armor tube 
Those work really well. They're weightless. They glide across the top of the rocks. They're not going to get hung up in there. But if you're fishing something with a weight on it, say a jig, Texas rig baits is a good example. With that bullet head sinker, I'm telling you what, man, that's like Velcro to rocks. That bullet head, as soon as it touches the rocks, it gets wedged in between those cracks and crevices and it's not coming out. You're going to get really, really frustrated fishing those, you know, darter heads, anything with that kind of cone shape weight to it, don't even bother using those in riprap. Uh, even shaky heads can be, you know, can get stuck in the, in the rocks. But, uh, but football head jigs, those are a little bit better. They don't get hung up as much, but it depends on the type of riprap. They get hung up in more kinds of riprap than the other. I find that in the smaller chunk riprap, they get hung up a lot more than in the bigger boulders like this. You're just gonna have to experiment. But what works really well? There's a couple of rigs that work really well with weights on them that I find that uh, don't get hung up as much. First off is a split shot rig. Split shot rig, by its nature, it, you're not lifting and dropping it down like the other rigs. So it's not going to settle down into the, the rocks as much. You actually are gliding that along. You're moving the, that bait along the, uh, the top of the rocks. And this, this weight, you see the shape of it? The weight is cylindrical and it's between you and the bait. So as you're bringing it across the rocks, it's actually gliding horizontally across the tops of the rocks. That's what you want. It's not gonna get hung up as much. It will get hung up, but not as much as some of the other rigs. Also, another bait that works really well is the tube jig, but specifically, if you have the tube rig like this with the jig inside the tube, that's what you want. That doesn't get hung up as much. I don't know exactly why. I really can't tell you why. I don't know for sure, but I fished it a lot in the rocks. It gets hung up every now and then, but not as much as some of those other rigs. All right, we've talked about some of the baits to use, some of the rigs to use. Now let's talk about how to find those hot spots in riprap. Look at this, look at how long this is. This is a long, long stretch of riprap. This is only a piece of it. I'm actually fishing one of the largest man-made uh, uh, dams in the US. It goes for over three and a half miles long. <laughs> so how do you find the hot spots in a long stretch like that? Well, if you take a look, look, see, we're not looking three and a half miles down this stretch. It actually turns at some point. Well, that's the first thing you want to look for. Look for any sort of anomalies where it bends, it turns, little point comes out, little curves. Those little stretches, those can be hot spots. Also, you know, this isn't completely even all the way across. They bring in these big dump trucks and drop all these rocks into place. So it's uneven. There are little small points and pockets along the way. Those can be hot spots as well. There also sometimes be big chunk rocks intermixed with little ones. So the big rocks, the bass like to sit up on those rocks and ambush the prey that I told you about. So if you find anything like that with big rocks in there, definitely you'll want to fish them. Other spots. Sometimes on riprap, not on this one that I'm fishing, but in other places I've fished, water's on each side, each side of the road. Well, the engineers will put culverts in between. Well, those culverts, they act just like, like little highways. The bass will sit up on those and bait fish, and they'll ambush the bait fish coming in and out of those culverts. Think about the bottom too. The bottom contour, it's not even. Along riprap, not as, this one gets really deep in some spots, up to 100 feet deep, but in other areas it's shallower where it actually where the rocks you know, meet where the bottom is. Watch that. Sometimes you'll see the difference shift from say 8 feet to 6 feet or 9 feet to 4 feet. Those bottom shifts, those can be hot spots as well. And on the shallower ones, sometimes weeds will grow up right up to the rocks. Now you've got an edge. You've got a place where the rock meets the bottom where the weeds are at. Nice. Okay, you want to fish that, especially if you've got a, a contour change right in with that. Definitely can be a real hot spot. So, how do you find these things? Well, like for example, the culverts, like I mentioned. You're not going to see that underwater. But sometimes bank, bank fishermen, what they'll do is they'll take a can of spray paint and they'll mark the rocks with spray paint. Or, if, you know, like a, here there's a road on the top and sometimes what they'll do is they'll mark the inside of the guardrail with a, you know, some spray paint or they'll stick a, a stick in the, in the ground with maybe a Coke bottle on top of it, something to mark it. Look for those things. They're there for a reason. If you've never fished a stretch, stretch before, and you see that type of thing, well, someone marked it there for a reason, so fish, fish that area. But also, you're just gonna have to find your, look at your depth finder, too, and watch for those changes. What I like to do is this. I'll go fish 
a stretch of bank like this, and when I see anything like I just mentioned, I'll mark it on my GPS. Also, whenever I catch a fish, I'll mark that too. The more I keep fishing that, that stretch over and over, I'll keep hitting waypoints, and pretty soon, what you'll see on your GPS is these little clusters of waypoints along long stretches of, of, uh, of riprap. Those are gonna be your hot spots. Now I know if I'm fishing, if I wanna go fish it again, I just hit those hot spots and I skip all the unproductive water. That way I know that my bait is always gonna be in the productive zone and that's especially useful when I'm fishing tournaments. I'm gonna to be very efficient during that day. Anyway, that's how I approach riprap. That's the way I find all those hot spots. I hope that helps you. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com. Hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And if you want to watch more videos like this, click one of the images on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.